Well, good morning, everyone. And once again, welcome to the California Nevada chat of March 8th, 2024. Uh, my name is Len Dumas, Executive Director of the Northern California PGA. And on behalf of our president, Eric Lippert, and our colleagues, Executive Director, CEO, Nikki Gatch, and the Southern California PGA, and President Eric Lohman, uh, we thank you for the continued support. And our on-air team, Steve Monday, Shelby Zell, Bryce Siever, Danny Cross, and uh, once again, we're up and running and grateful to be here on Friday morning. Uh, thanks, our guests. We have a lot of golf to discuss this morning. This is great. Our thanks to our guests. Uh, returning, Jeremy Friedman. Uh, Jeremy, thank you, Vice President of Public Relations for Outlier Sports. PGA member Jim Gormley, Director of Golf at Palos Verdes Golf Club. A PGA member Rick Riley, Director of Golf at Wilshire Country Club. And Tony Rice. Uh, Tony Rice uh, will be uh, subbing for Craig today. Craig Kessler is, I believe, in Las Vegas speaking at the CMAA uh, annual meeting. Or, or, and uh, Tony is a principal of Rice Englander and Associates, representing all of us on Capitol Hill in Sacramento through the California Alliance for Golf. And certainly a lot of recent updates with the budget that's in front of the state at the moment. And also any bills that are affecting our industry that, that hope may maybe have gone away, which might be to our benefit, or maybe that we need to be have on our radar and make sure we're paying attention. So with all that, as I said, we have a lot of, of great stuff ahead. And at this time, I'll turn it over to uh, Nikki. Nikki? Yeah. Thanks, Len. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining. Happy Friday. Uh, happy International Women's Day. Um, to everybody, and uh, we're thrilled to have um, our guests with us today. We're going to start with with Jeremy, who Lynn introduced. You know, we're fortunate to to host um, two LPGA tour events in Los Angeles. Uh, we've got one later on uh, this month at Jim's Course, Palos Verdes Golf Club, and then later in April um, at uh, Wilshire, uh, where Rick Riley um, is the director of golf. So. Jeremy, can you just tell us a little bit about who Outlier is, what you all do? Obviously, we know you manage these two events, but how does that work? Are there other events that you manage as well on the tour? Yep. So uh, thanks, Nikki, and uh, and hi, everybody. Good uh, good good morning uh, out in out in the West Coast. Uh, yes. So uh, Outlier. So we own and operate the two Los Angeles uh, LPGA events. Uh, the Fur Hill Say Repock Championship, which takes place later this month, and then the JM Eagle LA Championship presented by Plast Pro at Wilshire Country Club in April. Uh, we are a uh, sports and entertainment marketing agency that we run, what is it now? We run nine, 10 professional golf tournaments. So we run uh, seven LPGA Tour events. Uh, we also run the Chubb Classic on PGA Tour Champions, which we just concluded uh, last month. And we also do the Magnet Championship on the Corn Ferry Tour in central New Jersey. Uh, we also do a variety of uh, con consulting uh, initiatives with uh, with some of the bigger partners in, in golf, including Serve Pro um and uh and and chubb as well so uh it's it's for for me i'm the i'm i'm the pr guy for the company i'm the uh, i'm the media director for each of these tournaments uh i'm uh before i came here a couple of years ago i was pr director at golf channel and nbc sports for 15 years uh so i've been in this industry for for quite a while and now that i'm on the agency side being the media guy for these tournaments i'm taking care of my media people Right. So it's the uh, as, as, as we like to say, or as I like to say, media centers are the front of the house to the rest of the world. Right. So uh, take take care of the media. You know, you got you get good coverage. So uh, it's it's a pleasure to uh, to do these two uh, upcoming events in L.A. It's, it's two, two of my favorite events on uh, on our schedule and uh, looking forward to working with Jim and Rick and Nikki and, and you guys uh, on, on and you guys at the SCPGA, you, you guys are great partners for, for these tournaments as well. So we are excited about these upcoming events for sure. Well, we are too. And we appreciate the partnership we've had for quite a few years now. And, um, you know, we try to promote, promote the event and promote ticket sales. We help you with um, volunteers for the scoring tent. I know a lot of our members enjoy doing that, getting up close and personal with the, with the pros and, 
um, then you allow us to have uh, some boot space um, on property so that we can promote the game, promote the PGA and promote the industry in general. So we appreciate the partnership. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the two. I know there's been some name changes, so maybe you can talk about that. Is either one called the LA Open any longer? No, ne neither one is called uh, is called the LA Open. So uh, the, both of these tournaments at you know were, were called the LA Open uh, right. in the past, but uh, so we're uh, there has been some, some some name changes with these tournaments. So the uh, the first one that's at Palos Verdes Golf Club. Uh, the tournament this year and going forward is the Fur Hill Sari Pak Championship. So, World Golf Hall of Famer Sari Pak is the tournament host. Uh, I I joke that uh, that you know for for the younger folks who may not know who Sari Pak is, I tell them that every player on the LPGA Tour that's from Korea who's playing on the LPGA Tour is playing because of her. She is mm -hmm. in 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 Korea. She's the Beatles. Um, and she is, she's just a global icon. So we are excited for her, uh, to be the tournament host uh, Fur Hills is a global investment firm based in Silicon Valley, um, in, in the Bay that, uh, they're, uh, joined as title sponsor. So that's, uh, so we're excited about, uh, about that tournament working with, uh, with Jim and company, uh, and our, our tournament staff is, uh, on planes right now in, in route to, uh, Los Angeles currently they're going to be on the ground uh, today and and executing the tournament I'm coming out there uh, next week for the event our tournament in April is the JM Eagle uh, LA championship presented by Plaspro this is the second year that JM Eagle is title sponsor and Plaspro is presenting sponsor uh, the they are the CEOs of of those companies are Walter and Shirley Wang uh, JM Eagle and Plaspro are based there in Los Angeles. Walter and Shirley Wang are, uh, they're very well-known, uh, business, business executives in Los Angeles, Southern California. And they are, they're, 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 they're women's sports fans, women's golf fans at heart. They have, this is the second year of the tournament, uh, under this title and presenting sponsor, what they've done in coming up on year two. Uh, first thing they did was they doubled the tournament purse uh, in year one from 1.5 to 3 million. Uh, tournament purse will be 3 million uh, once again this year. Uh, but one of the additional enhancements that Walter and Shirley are doing for, for the tournament itself is every player in the tournament field, all 100, 144 players, Walter and Shirley are picking up, are taking care of their travel or their hotel accommodations uh, for oh. all of tournament week. So that is for LPJ players is a huge weight mm -hmm. off of their shoulders that they don't have to worry about travel accommodations and hotel accommodations during tournament week. So, uh, we have more to come, uh, announcements on, uh, from, from this tournament as well. Uh, but yes, there, there has been a few name changes. Um, <laughs> but we are, well, one of the things that we're also doing, uh, for both tournaments, because there's been name changes and such, we are, for both tournaments, we are celebrating. We're going to be celebrating the past champions of the uh, of at each golf course. So at Palos Verdes, this will be the third year that the LPGA Tour is at Palos Verdes Golf Club. Uh, Roning in one last year, and then Marina Alex uh, won two years ago. So we're going to be celebrating them this year. And then at Wilshire, it's it was the LA Open. Um, and so, but we are, we are going to be celebrating the past champions. there, kind of just cleaning it up a little bit, right. So to kind of make it less confusing for us, for the media, and also to, you know, to celebrate those past champions at those particular golf courses, because there's been a couple of name changes over the years. Interesting. Uh, well, thanks for that history and, and, uh, would be awesome to get the opportunity to meet Mr. and Mrs. Wang and thank them in person. That, that's huge. I know they've been big supporters, um, uh, of coming here. So uh, how many, I'm curious, how many of your team um, flies in and comes to LA? How long do they stay? Is it the same team for both events? Will they just stay for the month or how does that work? It's, uh, it's, it's a combo. Uh, we, we have, uh, we have a tournament staff that's based in Los Angeles um, and they work on both events. Um, but we also bring in, because so we have 
um, we have tournament offices. We have 12 tournament offices throughout the country. So we have staff all over the country. So uh, we have for the Fur Hill Savory Pot Championship, um, we have our some of our LA based uh, base team. And then we have team members coming from Dallas, coming from Arkansas. Me, I live in Tampa, Florida, uh, coming from Tampa, uh, coming from Michigan. So kind of all coming together for uh, for that tournament. Uh, the our, op, our lead operations folks and our tournament manager all, are actually there starting today to start uh, helping with the tournament build um, and, and getting all the infrastructure ready. And then throughout the week, next week, the rest of our tournament staff will all be arriving to Palos Verdes and the full tournament staff will be all there by end of the week next week. And then we're all there through tournament week. And then most everybody leaves probably the Wednesday or Thursday uh, after tournament week is concluded. Same thing for uh, for the JM Eagle LA Championship. The, the difference is we have, a, we have a larger LA staff that works on, that focuses strictly on that event. Um, and then we also have several team members that will also be traveling in throughout the country for for that week. So it's the same same type of program. All together, we probably have, oh, I would say, 20-ish um, uh, staff members and team members uh, on site uh, that, that work the event. And then naturally, we have hundreds of volunteers that, that help run the event that you guys help with because we all know and we're, we're all in the golf industry. We can't do these events without volunteers. So right. they are they are the lifeblood of, uh, of of every tournament that we do. And if anybody's on and is interested in working the scoring tent, uh, please reach out to us. It is a lot of fun. So thanks. Lynn, I think you had a question for Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy, once again, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Good to see you again. Great to have you Good back. Good to see you too. Uh, yeah. And uh, so the next uh, pretty much 60 days are just to the wall. Go get them. So to, to yep. take what... Jeremy, what you just said, extend that a little bit further. How far out are you in planning for future events? A year, two years, three years, so on and so forth? Uh, one year. So one year. Uh, so when we, we like to say when uh, when when the final putt has dropped on Sunday, right. planning begins for next year. Right. right. And 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 what we do with a lot of them, which I'm I'm you know sure like a lot a lot of a lot of you guys are on the call too. When you do events annually, when the final putt drops, everything is fresh in the head, right? It's a, right. all right, so here's what worked. Here's what we can improve on Here's Cause it's, it's when that's all in the head, that's, that helps to help plan for, you know, mm -hmm. for, for the following year. So it is a, it is a year round planning process. Uh, and I would say the full ramp ups for each of these tournaments are probably you know, I would say eight months, eight months out prior to term is when the full, you know, the, I mean, it's, it's a variety, it's a variety of things. It's, it's selling partnerships, right. It's recruiting right. volunteers. It's in my end, it's, it's the media side of things. Um, it's the operation side of things, you know, working with, with the hundreds of vendors that we have. So it is a year round process. So that's, that's the, the, the short and long and the short of it is when the final putt drops at each of these tournaments, Right. We're, we're, we're getting we're getting ready to, to do the following year. Right. On to the next town. So within that, Jeremy, in the lead time, does someone from from the team to some extent move into the local neighborhood and, and almost as an overseer, general contractor type thing? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So most uh, almost all of our tournaments, we have our tournament director, tournament manager slash executive director and maybe a variety of, of staff members are in market. Um, and we have uh, we we have a, a Los Angeles based team that's in market year round, and and we up you know we up staff with with our our, our tournament staffs uh, throughout the country. So pretty much at at every tournament that we do uh, in that in the city that that we host a tournament, we have a tournament office and a tournament staff of your core team that's there year round, and then we. We up staff as we get uh, get closer to the to the tournament itself. Great, 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 Jeremy. Thank you. You know when you when you tell a story about such as Mr. And Mrs. Wang picking up the the tab for all the players that I think I think once again just being totally biased 
it is the greatest game of all. And only in golf do things like that happen because it's a personal game at the end of the day. It's a one-on-one -on -one speak to the players, get to know the players and so on and so forth. So that's just incredible. Yep. And they are, uh, as, uh, as, as Rick knows, he's, he's gotten to know Walter and Shirley. I mean, they're, they're, just, they're golf fans at heart, mm -hmm. right? And they, they want to, they, they want to elevate the game. They want to elevate women's sports and they want to be almost trendsetters on the LPGA tour. They want, they, they want to do these things to take care of the LPGA tour, take care of the players, take care of the fans, take care of spectators. And they want other tournaments to see, Hey, look, you know, I, we, they want other terms to see, Hey, look what they're doing. Let's, yeah. let's look to kind of, kind of mimic that. An example is in when we announced uh, JM Eagle and Plastro coming on as title and presenting sponsor in uh, late 2022 for the 2023 event. Um, we did that press conference at Wilshire uh, country club. So we announced that the purse was doubling from 1.5 to 3 million. Uh, that was the, they were the second, uh, no, actually, well, the first to announce it, um, but the second tournament in 2023 to have a $3 million purse wasn't is unheard of, you know, then in 2023. In 2024, there's 16 of them, right? So it's a nice. it's it's a trendsetter. It's it's a building, it's it's a building and elevating for 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 the for the good of the game and yeah. for on and and for the Sayre Pot Championship as well. That purse has been elevated for this year too. It's up to two million. So it's you know, everybody is kind of looking at each other and saying, all right, let's, you know, let's, let's help each other. Let's help grow the game. Uh, and let's, let's help, you know, not only for the players, but also for the spectators alike. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Jeremy. Good luck. And uh, thank you once again for being with us. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. Love for you to, to stay on if, if your time allows. Um, yep. We're going to jump over to our, our two host PGA professionals of these two great mm -hmm. events. Um, Mr. Jim Gormley, uh, Director of Golf at Palos Verdes Golf Club, and Mr. Rick Riley, Director of Golf at Wilshire Country Club. Um, Gorms, I'm going to start with you. I know, you know, everyone is aware of all the rain that we've had this year. You, you know where I'm going with this. Um, I, I know you had some damage uh, to the driving range. Can you update us on kind of what happened and, and where you are? And um, I know everything will be great, but <laughs> a little bit of a curveball that you weren't expecting. I, I well, know. yes, um, um, we do have a little bit of a challenge with our driving range. Uh, you know, some of you know, we uh, we never had a range until 1995 when we built it. Actually, it opened in 95, so we built it in 94. Um, and we built it in an area that is uh, gets a lot of water that runs through the rest of the golf course to get out to the ocean. So we have had some challenges. Um, we brought in 12 truckloads of dirt to uh, try and backfill some of the areas in the back of the driving range that have been uh, blown out. And we are in the process of uh, sodding uh, the the driving range right now. So um, I'm not at the course right now, but that's, that's the <laughs> latest update that I have for you on that. So uh, it will be challenging getting the picker out there and, 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 you know, so hopefully uh, there'll be plenty of golf balls. Absolutely. What from a uh, from a planning standpoint for you and the club, you know, whether that's your staff or your members, what what goes into something like you know hosting a tour event? It, it's more than I thought. Um, you know, you don't really realize it until you the logistics of everything that goes on until you really uh, host one of these things. So, you know, the for the staff, it's you know obviously. Um, you know, we move out of the golf shop. So we actually go out on to some temporary tents on the course uh, to sell merchandise. And so they, they turn our golf shop into a uh, kind of a patio experience for the, uh, for, for the uh, spectators for some spectators. So it's kind of a VIP area. So there's a lot that goes into it, but uh, you know, they enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. Were they, uh, when you all were first approached to, to host this event, I mean, were the, were the members, totally on board at first or how, how did that go about? Yeah, I think, it, you know, we host a big women's college event in February. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, it was kind of an, I wouldn't say an easy transition for the membership, but I think they were excited and, and um, you know, they're very supportive of it because we get a lot of volunteers um, from our, from our membership, which obviously as Jeremy alluded to that they, those are the people that really, kind of run this event that make this event happen because without them you know there's just so much to to do that 
behind the scenes that you don't see when you're just walking around spectating. Yeah. And I know you coach quite a few players on the LPGA. Will we see you uh, on the grounds working or will we see you on the course looping? <laughs> I don't think I'm looping this year. Uh, that, <laughs> hopefully, I think the, my looping days are over, but uh, I, I got my top five. So that's all, you know, she finished top five that day. So I'm going to uh, just kind of bow out gracefully for that one round. But uh, I'll be go. I'll be working with some of the players for sure. And uh, I'll be I'll be doing a lot of things. So running all over the place. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. We look forward to seeing you out there. And I know we have a lot of our Southern Cal junior alumni out there playing. So we'll be um, we'll be watching them. We'll also be doing um, at both events, uh, we do our practice with a pro. So uh, we reach out to some of our alum and they're gracious enough to uh, invite a, a young lady from our junior tour to come out and play nine holes with them during their practice mm -hmm. round. So um, right. lining that up as we speak, I, I believe we've got Rose Zang lined up um, at Wilshire and um, working on confirming for for PV. So always an exciting thing to do. And Jeremy, we appreciate you all letting us do that as well. Lynn, I think you had a couple of questions for Jim. Yeah, Jim, thanks. While the team is sodding the back of the range and you're at Pebble Beach, all good. That's a good Friday. Um, so, <laughs> hey, Jim, uh, you know, as, as Rick mentioned, this is the third year, you know, that you've been hosting at tour events and you've got an absolutely beautiful facility. Uh, have there been moments of, golf course discussion, you know, adjustments, changes, edits, move this, move that uh, to accommodate the tour players? Well, the one thing we do is we we flip our back, our front nine, our back nine. So um, mostly for the views for TV, I think, um, you know, we and we did some things, you know, I went through the first year with the rural staff and kind of just told them how the golf course played. We walked, you know, rode around the golf course and you know, just explain to them, here's what happens, you know, when we have the, here's the prevailing wind, here's what happens if we get a Santa Ana and, and so how the golf course can change. And, but I let them set it up that way as far as what they do for the tour players. Yeah. So we're about, about two weeks away, you're right. Plus or minus uh, to the, to the first, to the balls in the air. So what else, other than the range, uh, what else is happening around the golf course? You know? Well, we, you know, we're just trying to get, you know, we're trying to get mowers out right now because that last bit of rain that we just had didn't help things. So the rough is very, uh, very hardy right now, I would say, um, you know, and then it's just going to be getting badges to the members and, and, and my staff, you know, kind of organizing the golf shop to get ready to move into some temporary uh, yeah. tents while we're there. And, and, um, you know, just get ready to roll. And, you know, our lot, it's really Sunday the 17th is when we shut down. So, um, yeah. you know, then it's, it's, it's on from there. Yeah. Well, Jim, thanks. Good luck. And, and, uh, thanks for, for all that, that you're doing and good to have you with us. Well, thank you. And then I'll be going over to Riles and just watch him. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, before we segue over to, to Rick and the event at, at Wilshire, just like to recognize and welcome uh, the president of the Southern California section, Mr. Eric Lohman. Eric, would you like to say a few words? Oh, gosh, yes. What a great opportunity to, to be a, a part of uh, this today. So thank you very much. Um, obviously, just seeing everyone on the call. I apologize as I showed up a little late. We have a big tournament today ourselves, but not nearly uh, cool in its own regard, but not nearly as cool as the stuff that Jim and Rick are putting on. So um, just great to hear about uh, those opportunities. And I'm not quite sure I'll be able to uh, visit you all in person this year, but I'll be watching uh, from afar, but it's always neat to see some of our courses like uh, Wilshire and and uh, and uh, Palos Verdes on TV, because when you get a chance to play it and then watch it on TV with some of the best women in the world, it's just such a neat thing just to be able to reflect. Uh, they generally hit it farther than I do now, and they generally miss all the obstacles and hazards that I tend to find. Um, but I just want to say uh it's it's a, it's a nice thing to have these two guys on the uh, the call they're they're uh, legends in their own right and uh mm -hmm. their own mind um but they do so much for us as a section and so much for us as a in southern california and you know california in general because of uh, what they've done in the past and what they'll do in the future so i just want to say thank you to those two men especially um and wish them well with their uh, their upcoming events um outside of that i really did not have an agenda I just uh, wanted to say hi to everybody. Thanks for putting this on. Um, I unfortunately have to run again, um, but just appreciate uh, Len and Tom's efforts with this. And uh, uh, thank you. You guys have a great day. And I do know next week we're celebrating our centennial. And I know the week after that, we're going to celebrate our Hall of Fame. 
I can't wait to see those who will be in attendance there. Um, such a great couple, two or three weeks as we kick into the, the true spirit of the golf season in Southern California. And then we make our way to the Masters. So I'm a little giddy today uh, because the sun's out. That means the guns are out. Uh, so let's uh, get back after it, if, they, if you know what I mean. So thank you all. Have a great day. And I appreciate uh, the two minutes of banter. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, guys and gals. Thank yeah. You. Thank Eric. That, that's that's way too happy for for a uh, section president. Okay, I'll just let you know. But I'll, okay. hey, where is my boy Lippert, by the way? Because he's not on this, and I'm just trying to do more of these this year than he does, so that I will forever be known as the better Eric. He is at a budget meeting. Yeah. So holy smokes, what is that? Like a trillion dollars at Pebble Beach? <laughs> I don't even want to know what that number would look like, but it's pretty impressive, I'm sure. It's I'm out of here. You guys keep money. doing what you're doing. I appreciate the time. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Know. Hey, Rick, thank you for joining us. And, you know, Wilshire is just a, not only a part of California history, but of golf history in general. And you've been there quite a while. I think it would be great to have some history, uh, Rick, before we talk about the events, if you wouldn't mind, some of the history of Wilshire. Yeah, 1919 was our, uh, our initiation day. That uh, Norman Beth was our architect. He was involved with both Wilshire and San Gabriel. Did a lot of other clubs around town, too, but... We've had uh, yeah, the LA Open here back in the 30s and 40s. Uh, we had the senior tour tour here from 97 to 2002. We did have an LPJ event in 2002 as well. So we've had a lot of big events here, some SC, SCGA championships. So it's a, the course has stood the test of time. Um, it's a great golf course for the ladies. The, the yardage is, those gals can hit them. I mean, like, like you said, those gals can play. And it's not real long, but it's, it's they got to hit every club in the bag. Greens are tricky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we watch them. Gorms is up there. We, you know, work with some of the girls in the putting. It's like, you know, the, you know the, our caddies tend to. We have four or five of them working. They're very helpful for these for this these greens. They're they're tricky to read. And these guys are rolling to town. Don't know the greens are, they're four or five four or five shots behind when by the time the week's over. So, it's a great golf course. Uh, we are going to do a big project here in October restoration. Uh, we're going to change the greens from Poana to Pure Distinction Bent. Our Barank is our biggest feature on the golf course, and that'll we're going to armor it and kind of widen it. We get a lot of flooding here two weeks ago, three weeks. We had eight inches of rain. It hit us pretty hard, did some damage on the third hole. But, um, you know, the, the, the course really stands well on TV. It's just, it just it shows well. The, the gals just love coming here. Um, mm -hmm. They love the food. They love the golf course. They love the memberships. The membership really gets behind it here. Mm -hmm. um it's it's a it's a great event for the club yeah so rick you're about uh let's see four maybe five weeks away five weeks away six weeks away yeah april 21st to the 28th um so we're uh actually right now we're our golf course is closed we're, we're air fine the green's doing a three eight inch punch on the green it's not a big one uh verticutting the fairways uh doing some cleanup work around the bracket from the rains but uh it should be pretty good assuming we don't get a lot more rain between now and then um it's funny last year we had some had a lot of frost the golf course was slow to recover but this year we got you know we had a lot of rain and not as much frost so it, it should be it should be in primo primo shape when we roll around for april 21st right and you mentioned Eric, that you know which is great to hear that the members just take to this and are so proud of it uh to have the best players in the world at the facility so easy enough to to get them to rally around yes no it, it definitely we Got a lot of member support. Uh, in the past, we'd have probably 35 or 40 ladies would stay at members' homes. Now with Shirley and Walter um, mm. pretty much taking care of all their accommodations. I still think you know, one of the gals that saves us is going to stay with us. You know, they kind of like to stay with people and interact, you know, looking at four four corners of the hotel room, kind of boarding. So um, it's 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 amazing what they've done, though, for the gals. That's, that's a big chunk of change to run a hotel room for six or seven days in L.A. So that's... Um, yeah. It's it's they've really done a great job, you know, for these gals on the LPGA tour. Yeah, that that's incredible, Rick. That's incredible, and I think it's a, just a reflection of the generosity yeah. of the people in the game of golf, understanding that the the good that's done, the contributions to a community through the game. The game is the is the tool to get everything there. Absolutely. Yeah. Rick, if you don't mind, maybe a little bit more on the on the renovation. You mentioned it's pretty much shut it down October one. And it was this, I'm sure it's been in the works for a couple of years. Is it a result? It's yeah, time it's, to uh, update so, the golf course. Some other needs. So, yeah. 
Kyle Phillips did a did a, a renovation in 2008 here, and um, he didn't have full latitude to do the whole project. He, you know, he. I don't want to say you know some people get on the on committees and they they become architects and he's pretty much been given full reign here. Really, this arch this whole project was kind of born out of infrastructure. We had a, an aging irrigation system, our Branca, which is our biggest asset and our biggest liability, really caused a lot of issues year in and year out. Our greens are eight months a year the best in town. Poana, it's pure. Mm -hmm. Four months a year we struggle. Our, our superintendent. Um, you know, having to hand water syringe in the afternoon in the summertime just to keep them alive because the root structure of the point as you know is very shallow and mm -hmm. the pure distinction bent the root structure can go down six or seven inches so we'll have pretty much consistent year-round surfaces on the putting greens you know la country club uh hillcrest and Bel Air all have installed pure distinction bent had great success we're going to redo our bunkers going to redo the drainage so it's it's a big project but a lot of it is born out of just the infrastructure we had a vote for the membership. We had 90% of our members vote and 79% voted in favor of it. So it was a very, very uh, mm -hmm. positive vote. Uh, not a lot of squabbling. You know, we have a small minority that obviously didn't want to do it, but uh, it's exciting. It's an exciting time for the club and we're looking forward to it. Right. And you pretty much have it on the calendar for a year, Rick, start to finish. Yeah, look on October 1st of, of 24 to reopen October 1st of 25. Um, yeah. It's exciting. Great. Well, well, thanks again for all the hosting over the years and being there and participating so much. And good luck. Good luck with the renovation. Very exciting. It is. You know. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Look forward to, to coming out. Always enjoy coming out to both events. Um, you mentioned uh, the players just love the event, love the club. Are, have there been any like special requests? You mentioned the food. So there's special requests for player dining. Are there special requests for uh locker room snacks uh any inside scoop behind the curtain you can you can share with us yeah i think i think you know we i think the first year we gave the gals all uh oh what's the bottled uh it's like nice bottles of healthy healthy drinks i think the big thing is that the food our chef does a great job here and the, the players are actually actually able to interact with the, with the members uh, which is kind of a cool deal. A lot of, there's actually a place for the for LPGA only, but a lot of them will actually get out with our members. So it's a really great mm -hmm. interaction with everybody, and they really enjoy it. Um, and like I say, we're, we're in we're in, we're in Koreatown pretty much, and they love all the restaurants around here. Um, some great restaurants in LA, and it's it's there are a lot of foodies on the LPGA tour, so it's it's um, they like coming here. They like coming here. Awesome. Um, we had one question that, that popped up, um, what, it, and maybe this is a question for Jeremy or, or anybody, um, will, will these events return next year to these two host host sites or is there a, is there a long-term contract in place that you can share? The, uh, the Fur Hill Sari Park championship will be, uh, so that'll return to Palos Verdes, uh, same same time frame as as next year for the uh jm eagle championship uh it will be uh another rick uh, and we're, we're in discussions with the lpga about 2025 schedule so the the tentative plan is in late in in the fall next year after the after the club opens is uh that's that's the uh, that's the plan that we're talking with the lpga about currently okay great so, but it, it will be on out. the schedule in 2025. Awesome. Good to know. Good to know. Thanks. Uh, thanks to whoever uh, asked that question. And um, Riles, will we see you looping out there? <laughs> you know what? Probably not. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty busy. We actually have the whole merchandise for the week. So, mm. um, I mean, the big day for us is Wednesday. The prime. We have 240 players, um, you know, getting, you know, they all walk with caddies. It's a great experience. And I think the big thing about this event I'm like a, a PGA tour event. I mean, they're playing from the same set of tees and they're, they're, I mean, the LPGA gals really interact with the players. It's a great experience. I've had a number of guys play in tour event programs and they said, listen, the LPGA is, they're the, it's, a, it's the best because the gals are talking to you. They, they kind of right. hit it. They don't hit it 350. You know, they hit, it, it's more like, right. I, hit, I hit it about 210 now. So they blow by me by 20, <laughs> but I can, I can relate to their games a lot more than yeah. I can relate to some of these guys who are hitting at 340. So I think that's part of it. 
Um, I think the big deal is, um, once again, it's it's the members really enjoy it. Um, the, the people at the program enjoy it. And I think it's I think that's the thing that's great about these these programs. I'd like to say it's a it's a it's a morning and an afternoon. It's it's a full deal. And, and the gals play nine holes, play nine holes with, with the different LPGA players. You get to know a gal and they they, they right. become friends. I mean, they, they really I think the LPGA is doing a good job of hey girls, you got to you've got to interact. You can't just hit a shot and go do your thing. And so they've all been kind of, you know, taught to interact and it's, it's a great experience. Yeah. I've, I've had an opportunity to play in one LPGA pro-am and, and same thing, you know, it's great to be able to play with two players. You play front nine with one player and then you switch and um, you get to experience with the two players, but 240 players. Did you say that? That's a lot of players. Yeah. It's a lot two of players. Shot, double shotgun. It's no, it's tea time. Seven to okay. seven to nine, ten, and we go again from like uh, eleven fifty to two o'clock. So it's it's That's our, great. Our, our biggest thing is kind of just making sure the caddies all show up because we got them all set yeah. up to carry two bags, and some of the guys go twice, and it's it's uh, that's one of our issues that that Wednesday. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I'll be there to help you, Ross. Thanks. Yes, <laughs> he can we pay well in dorms. You can double bag it. Uh, well, that's awesome. Thank, thanks, Rick. Thanks, Jim and Jeremy uh, for you all being on, taking time. I know it's a busy time. We look forward to seeing you all out at these events and, and having a great time. And um, mm -hmm. Lynn, I'll turn it back over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> As Nikki says, Jeremy, Jim uh, and Rick and good luck. And, and we'll see you during the season. Another great year of golf and for golf here in California. Just awesome. So next up, uh, Tony Rice and Tony is literally on Capitol Hill in Sacramento, representing us through the California Alliance for Golf. And um, Tony, first off, welcome. Thanks yep. for, for jumping in and uh, being, quote unquote, Craig Kessler for the day. We appreciate that. And so, Tony, first off, give everybody a little bit. Uh, you have been with us before. It's been a while, a little bit about your background and your role with the California Alliance for Golf. And then we'll dig in and allow you to sort out the state of California for us. All right. Thanks, Len. Good morning, everyone. Uh, always great to join with you. Good to see you again, Nikki. Um, I'll try to be as grumpy as I can to channel my, my innermost Craig Kessler, but, um, you know, uh, we'll see how that goes at the end of the day. Uh, but I'm really here for your availability and any questions you, you may have. Um, I do have so, some items that uh, um, we want to talk about that CAC has identified, but certainly open to answering whatever questions you have. Just a little bit of uh, background about me. Um, next year will be my 30th year in Sacramento working in, in politics. Uh, I worked for a couple of members, a couple really uh, interesting and powerful members of where I learned a lot, went to the lobbying corps around 2000, opened my business in 2006, and here I am. So um, obviously very fortunate and appreciative of uh, the relationship that I have with CAG. Uh, we think we've been doing some pretty good things and punching above our weight, but um I've uh, been uh, uh, associating with a lot of you golf nuts for a while. I consider myself part of that, so that's not a disparaging remark. Uh, and uh, look forward to doing a lot more uh, and bigger things in the future. But, uh, Len, I, I, I'm happy to answer any questions. If you just want mm -hmm. me to give you kind of an update of the, of the state of the state, so to speak, I'm happy to do that. But I'm at yours and the rest of the crew's uh, disposal. Yeah, Tony, thank you. We do have uh, some questions by the state of the state. Uh, since we had a State of the Union last night, the State of the State might be a great way to start off here. Sure. Um, you know, top, top of mind, I, I know we'll, we'll delve into mm -hmm. and, uh, legislation specifically um, as the year unfolds, and that is always um, kind of the most pressing issue. But the backdrop is, and I'm sure all of you are aware if you've, um, you know, watched any news program or picked up any newspaper or article about uh, our state's finances that is pretty bad. Um, it's really bad and it keeps getting worse. Um, the governor on January 10th um, kind of undersold it in my opinion and it has proven to be right. Um, not that I'm some savant in all this, all the economic indicators were that the state was uh, experiencing a far greater deficit and that frankly impacted the PGA. Um, I don't know if all of you are aware, the folks who aren't on the CAG calls, but Len and myself and CAG, uh, we, we made an effort to secure uh, a nominal amount of funding 
uh, to help support and promote um, your PGA Hope program got a lot of interest. There are some very interested golfers in, in California politics at the highest levels, and that includes mm -hmm. uh, the, the Speaker of the Assembly, Mr. Rivas, a new speaker, relatively new speaker, loves the game of golf. There's a bunch of other folks um, that truly love. Steve Bradford is an old personal mm -hmm. friend of mine. Honestly, if if he had the game to be on the PGA Tour, he wouldn't even be in politics. He, he'd be on the PGA Tour. So there are a lot of allies to golf um, in Sacramento that have been around and that are in some pretty prominent positions. Um, and all that being said, I had a lot of great interest about the proposal um, about putting some amount of funding to facilitate your program. Um, but I was told, let, let's wait and see. Um, just by virtue of the fact that the budget is so bad that even a nominal amount of funding, and I'm talking between one and five million dollars, obviously that's a lot of money to, to you and I probably. I don't know, maybe some of you are, that's pocket change, but um, to, to most folks, that's a significant amount of money. But for the state of California, when you got a $250 billion budget, um, that really is almost a rounding error. Um, mm -hmm. But all that being said, uh, the, the state's finances are so bad that they're looking at just preserving core programs right now. They don't, they're not interested in expanding anything. If the budget were to turn around, if we were to do some creative things, we being the legislature to mitigate not only budget year, but out years deficits, then um, you know who knows? We might be doing an intercession run with a, with a special piece of legislation specifically to fund that program. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, I, I say all this and take your time just to let you know that the budget is the backdrop, the front drop, side drop. It, it is really um, consuming California, at least from the legislature's perspective, mm -hmm. and they're treading very lightly uh, with, with, with new money programs. So we're not giving up. I think it's a worthwhile uh, endeavor. I, again, got a lot of interest from legislators, but the timing was bad because the budget's so bad. Mm -hmm. There's a few other bills that I'll just talk about real briefly. Obviously, open any questions you may have, whether these bills or other bills, but CAG is engaging on a couple of different bills. One's an Almer Sushi bill, assembly member from um, the South Bay of Los Angeles. Um, he's got a bill that um, has uh, the golf course superintendents folks really kind of up in arms because uh, he... He is proposing a bill that, frankly, is a union bill, but it's uh, disguised in something that uh, essentially would limit the ability for some of these properties to um, utilize organic and non-organic um, 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 uh, weed, weed killers, for lack of a better word. Sorry, the, the, the name is escaping me, but um, I just got an email this morning from Jeff Jensen and Craig Kessler. Uh, that they'll be getting that to me shortly. And that's something that we will be engaging on. Um, there's a couple of outdoor recreation bills. One's better and more vetted than the other by, um, and that one being by the most recent uh, assembly speaker um, prior to Mr. Rivas, Mr. Anthony Rendon. Uh, we'll be looking to engage with that. I don't know how serious Anthony, Anthony Rendon is about running it, but it's a proposal that has some upside for, for the golfing community. So we'll be engaging on that. And then just I'll, I'll close with this, that we're always looking at the intersection of water and politics and golf, right? Mm -hmm. That kind of seems to be our transition and our in and our outs with uh, various legislators that want to do X, Y, Z as it relates to water. So um, CAG is going to be doing um, an informal um, lobby day. We, we, we definitely do one a year. We try to do two if the issues are are, are worthy of uh, that time dedication from a lot of the CAG folks who are around the state. Um, but we're going to be doing a lobby day light. Um, I'm waiting to get some um, details about what the timing of that is. I, I have not gotten dates from the CAG folks yet, but we'll be sitting down with a brand new water consultant to Mr. Revis. Uh -oh. Hold on, folks. Sorry. Uh, I was getting a call. Uh, apologies. Um, so we'll be sitting down with, with the water consultant, brand new in his position. He he oversees the policy of water and kind of natural resources stuff for the entire Democratic caucus in the assembly, as well as, as the speaker. And I, I expect that during that day, which I think will probably be in the next two, three weeks or so, um, we'll also want to be meeting with the authors of those bills that I just talked about. So mm -hmm. um, that's where CAG has me running right now. Um, and that's what's on the horizon. Um, but again, happy to answer any questions you may have about anything that you've heard or seen that's out there. So on uh, Tony, on the very first one, was that uh, 
3192, we talk about the wheat kill, we're talking about glyphosate and so on and so forth, right? The active ingredient in, um, oh, it went right on my head. Yep, is that is that 3192? It is, uh, Assembly Bill 3192 by Al Murasushi. Um, he, he's an interesting fella, I like him, but uh, his, how he moves and operates in politics is a little interesting. Um, I say that because there was an identical bill last year that was before a committee that he was on and he threw a conni conniption fit, uh, wound up tabling the bill, and now he here he is with almost substantially the exact same bill. Um, mm -hmm. And I mentioned that's a labor bill. Um, and so you can guess in an election year of, of where the, the member might be thinking um, with all of this. But um, that one, we, we have fought similar bills like that in the past and we've won. Um, there's always seems to be an effort to generate um, headlines by running uh, these types of bills. There was a bill a couple of years ago that said schools can't use it. Well, I got the chair of the Assembly Education Committee to kill the bill because he said, look, if it's good enough for schools, then it should be good enough for other people. This kind of targeted approach is uh, particularly for uh, at the behest of the uh, of the union. Um, it just doesn't kind of sit well with, with legislators. So it's going to be an interesting fight. Um, it, it's going to be one that we need to, to gear up for. But um, as of right now, I think that's top of the list of bills that we're going to need to uh, take a, a firm stand on. Yeah. And so that one, uh, so everyone knows it's uh, Assembly Bill 3192, the Major Coastal Resorts Environmental Accountability Act. And, and Tony, when I first saw it, it struck me as an extension of the, remember we had the the um, students at, in Monterey doing the golf balls that get into the ocean from the golf courses, right? And what that effect is, and now we're taking it a step further, the whole coast. And again, even though the research has shown whatever it has shown and, and not necessarily a negative way, you know, about the glyphosate in Roundup, that we're always going to have that battle. And to some extent, it feels like, okay, what else can we come up with to go after the industry a little bit? Yeah, and, and I'll just put a final cap on it for, for the other folks. I, I know Nikki and Len, you, you've been um, um, uh, privy to, to this insight um, based on your participation with CAG. But in many respects, just for the other folks on here, this is Al Murasushi and, and Unite Here, which is a hotel workers uh, union that um, it's it's going after Tara and Neil. That, that is that is the, the, the target. Um, there are some uh, properties on the coast that do not meet the definitions of the bill, and that was on purpose by the author. Um, but this is really trying to stick it to Terrania and to get them to um, yeah, have union representation at their property primarily. And Terrania is in Al Sushi's backyard. So mm -hmm. that that's that's just the, the basic political backroom nexus that I want everyone to be made aware of. Yeah. It's, it's so Tony, your experience and, and the beauty of it, right, and the value of it is, is peeling those layers back to find out what actually is this all about and how important it is, who, depending upon who is in the chair at the time. Yeah, I don't think I don't think this is going to be a surprise to any of you. I, um, you know, I've heard some of you by reputation. You, Len, obviously work closely. Nikki, you, you've been a rock star when you've been up here, and I've I've, I've come to enjoy our, our conversations because of your insight. But um, you know, it, with politics, as you, all of you well know, it's always important to get to the why, and mm -hmm. and, and this is the why. It is a pure labor pandering from Al Murasuchi who got beat up last year for throwing his temper tantrum. And now he's introducing the bill on his own to try to ingratiate himself with a, a fairly uh, politically powerful union in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tony, maybe Great. maybe one last question, if you don't mind, maybe just give us a, a you know bullet point version, if you will, on the independent contractor rule. I know there was, you know, a rule passed, but I know California has specific rules as well. Um, can you help us with that? Yeah, um, probably Craig would actually be um, the the better purveyor uh, of this insight because I think he's tracking it more than I have. Uh, I, I will just say this, that um, CAG, I think, punched far above its weight. We did a hell of a lot of work several years ago to um, carve out uh, um, what we thought was were some pretty significant exemptions, as well as getting the author of the bill to put a letter to the Assembly Journal at the time, which essentially can be utilized in case law before judges that this was my intent of the bill. So between 
the the letter to the journal as well as the actual physical language of the bill um you know, engulfed it did pretty well um mm -hmm. I, I think we did a great job of protecting um um uh, the, the 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 pga uh instructors and teachers um and, and and what have you on that i don't know nikki if if you're trying to make the the, the nexus between mm -hmm. what the feds are considering through the labor department and how that interplays here I don't, I don't have the latest, greatest up to date on that, but my understanding is that they're looking to be very similar to AB5, which was the original independent contractor language bill um, that I'm referring to. There's been follow-up, but we haven't needed to engage that based on the feedback from, from TAG. I will, I will point this out. Um, the acting labor secretary, um, and I, I heard today that she was confirmed, but I, I, I have not seen that. But Julie Sue is the Labor Secretary for President Biden. Julie Sue was the head of the Labor Department here in California when AB5 was making it, it, its way through the legislature. So um, I have heard, again, I, I think Craig could probably speak to the details better than I. So, so don't take this to the bank. But I have heard that um, the, the feds will look to model something after what we have done as opposed to superseding what we have done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay okay very good thank you appreciate that yeah. thanks for your time and filling yeah. in uh, for craig we appreciate it anytime i, I hope i brought my inner grumpy to to, to the party so <laughs> <laughs> all you, right you we, well. <clears throat> so, thanks tony <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you uh, so much for joining us and uh, Jeremy, Jim, Rick, and Tony for being here. And of course, Bryce and Steve and Shelby and Danny for, for getting us on the air. And uh, Nikki, we're ahead of schedule. How do you like that? So that's a good way to start the weekend. Let, let's start to wrap. It's all yours. I love it. I love it. Well, thanks everybody for, for jumping on. Um, looks like uh, April 19th will be our next California Nevada chat. So look for emails on that and our guest speakers will be announced shortly and then also as a reminder anyone that's on the webinar um, calling in by phone we don't have records so if you would like your pdr credit please either reach out to the southern california or northern california section and we will make sure that you get your credit thanks for joining us okay yeah thank you all again as, as we always say look you know look out for each other everybody be safe be healthy enjoy some great golf uh, at the Arnold Palmer this weekend and the great golf headed to Southern California in a couple weeks. Jim said, don't, don't call, just come on over uh, and, uh, and join us at Palos Verdes and uh, have a great weekend, everybody be safe. All right, thanks. Take care. Sure. Thank you. Thank Bye. you everybody.